And get ready, season two of Mysteries Decoded is premiering tonight. Our host Jennifer Marshall takes us on wild adventures to explore some of America's greatest unsolved mysteries, like the Phoenix Lights, the werewolves in Kentucky, Area 51, even the Salem Witch Trials, okay? I spoke to Jennifer about this second season and what we should be ready for, so take a look. Jennifer, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, anytime. So I have to just jump right into it. So how did you get involved in this field? I know you are your uh, Navy vet. Like now you're hosting, you know, Mysteries Decoded. What was the switch like from, from one to the other? Because now you're, you're doing so many things. Tell me how you got into it. So when I left the military, I uh, eventually made my way to private investigation. I had tried to go to law into law enforcement, but unfortunately that didn't work out. And private investigation was a much better fit for me. So at the time I was also kind of working in television as an actress. And when the opportunity came about, they were looking for a military veteran who had a background in television and who was a licensed investigator. So it really was just the perfect fit. That's amazing. I. I try to like get into uh, the the mysteries and, and all these different um, types of shows, but I was I was lucky enough to see a couple clips of what you guys have in store for this uh, season two. Tell me what makes this different from anything else that we've seen. I would just say, you know, it exceeded my wildest expectations going into. For, for example, The Conjuring House, which is our premiere episode. I had never seen the movie and I went in just with a blank slate, kind of expecting nothing. And the things that happened there that I still can't explain. And even after all of that happened, I still went through the house and I looked for hidden microphones. I looked for anything that kind of could be used to trick people. Not that I didn't trust the owners. Of course, I, I trust them and they're wonderful people. But that's my job as an investigator is to make sure that you know, something squirrely isn't going on. And there's nothing even to this day that could explain what happened there or why. Wow. And on the show, you do call yourself a skeptic. Um, so have there been any things to, to happen during your investigations to kind of like, you know, really push you towards one side or the other? You know, most of the time I maintain my skepticism. I still tend to interview people that I just think, oh, this person's either seeking fame or fortune. And oftentimes those people get cut out of the final episode because we don't want to give them airtime. But, um, you know, what happened in the Lizzie Borden house during season one and then what happened in the Conjuring house in season two, it's kept me on my toes and it's, it's made me question, maybe we don't know everything that we think we know. And maybe there is a scientific basis for some of this stuff but we just haven't determined what it is as of yet. Yeah, absolutely. So what is uh, kind of uh, the most surprising thing I'll ask <laughs> that has happened during this filming of season two? So I would say, whew, um, there were a couple things. Um, one, we got to go on basically a night hunt in one of our episodes um, for werewolves that had been seen in Kentucky. Uh, we got to go inside the Conjuring house, all parts of the Conjuring house, day and night. And then in one of our episodes, Alien Mountain, we got to interview some very, very controversial figures. So it's it's one of those things going into it. I never know where an investigation is going to take me, but it's always a lot of fun and I, I learn a ton. That is so interesting, especially when you, you talk about the Alien Mountain and in interviewing some uh, interesting figures. We are in Portland right now, and we kind of have this museum and uh, a big fan base for Sasquatch and Bigfoot. So, <laughs> so I'm wondering maybe if you guys are going to touch a little bit on that. Maybe not this season, maybe next season. <laughs> We might revisit it at one time. Um, when we did our Bigfoot investigation for season one, we went up to British Columbia, and then we also interviewed uh, a man with a PhD who's a professor in Idaho. So it's one of those things that comes up over and over again because there are so many sightings, and it comes up over generations, and it comes up all over the world. So I don't think that Bigfoot is going anywhere anytime soon. He'll be around. <laughs> yes, he will, girl. Yes, they <laughs> yes, he will. Well, thank you so much, Jennifer, for talking to me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me.